Alrighty, question six. The overall equation for a particular methanol fuel cell is shown below. Clearly it's the combustion of methanol, that's what a fuel cell kind of does. Um, the equation for the reaction that occurs at the cathode, which is reduction, um, which is not the fuel, um, in this fuel cell is what? Well, it's not carbon dioxide, that's a product. Um, it's not methanol because that is the fuel. Remember in a fuel cell, the fuel always goes in at the anode. So it's not that one. Oxygen is looking good because that is um, what's going to be reduced. If that's being oxidized, that must be reduced. And that is not right either, so it's going to be C. That looks pretty good for me there. Question seven. Question seven is, what is the total energy released in kilojoules when this is burnt or combusted by the looks of it in the presence of oxygen? I need to look at my data booklet for that one. So in my data booklet here, I've got the um, heat of combustions here for a few things. So butane is 49.7 and octane is 47.9. I've got 100 grams of that, so it's going to be 497. O, O, and therefore um, we've got we've got uh, 200 grams of that. So therefore, if I just get my calculator and do 47.9 times 2 times 100, gives me uh, 9580. I've got an extra zero there, which I shouldn't have. Plus those two together, plus that. And that gives me um, 14.55, which gives me B. So I think that should be right there. Question eight, an enzyme. An enzyme can distinguish between optical isomers. That's fair enough because um, they are obviously very specific and the orientation of the bonds are important. Catalyzes the forward and reverse reactions. Um, I know a catalyst does that. So I'm gonna say that looks pretty good as me. Always needs a coenzyme to function. Always there makes that not right. They only sometimes need to. Is not able to change shape. That is incorrect because we have the induced fit model. So therefore it's before in A and B. And realistically, um, I'm gonna be saying A for that one because I think this is probably trumps um, this idea of a forward and reverse catalyst because a catalyst does that as well whereas an enzyme is pretty really um, specific. So I think both of the A and B seem reasonable, but A at a push. There. Next question. Uh, long one, lots of information. Here's some nutritional information. Use the above information to find the percentage of energy content due to protein. So what we need to find is how much energy is produced from this. Again, I'm gonna to need to turn to my data booklet. So my data booklet here has the energy content of various um, food stuff. So therefore my protein here um, is this many kilojoules per gram, which is 17. So that times by 17 will give me my energy of protein. My fats times that by 37, um, which is my total. I don't care about that because it's in the total. Carbohydrates times that by 16. And that's gonna give me my energies. Dietary fiber cannot be digested, so I'm gonna ignore that. Sugars are within my carbohydrate. So let's just smash these calculations out, which is that times 17 gives me, whoops, hang on, 13.2 times 17 is 22.4.4. And then fats here is 16.3 times 37 is, 603.1 and then carbohydrates is 48.2 times 16 it gives me uh, 77.771.2 so I'll add these together 603.1 plus again 224.4 gives me this number here I'll take uh, the protein which is 224.4 and then I'll divide that by my answer and it will give me around about 14.0% so therefore it should be C um, and that's whoops, sorry C so hopefully that's gonna be pretty good and lastly in this video I'm gonna be looking at 
question 10, which is which of the following structures represents a zwitter ion? Zwitter ion have both a positive and negative, so therefore of the a two amino acid, um, two amino acids, so let's have a look at that. So this only has the negative, so it can't be A. This has only the positive, so it can't be B. This has both, and this has both. Now, zwitter ion has to have an overall charge of zero, so therefore it's going to be um, D there. So that because this one here has obviously both of the charges, but it also has the extra charge here, which would suggest it is probably in a basic environment. Um, kind of, anyway. But main thing is the zwitter ions will be um, having both charges there. Basic environment, I'm thinking, basically loss of hydrogen. If it's a basic environment, this would probably be changed as well. So it's probably not totally basic, but looking towards that. Main thing is, it's not a zwitter ion because it's got an overall negative charge there, whereas this one has an overall charge of zero. And that should be that explained.